Ladies and gentlemen, this is Aisha Shehi, a health coach from the National Health Insurance Company, Oman, and I'm part of the disease management team. Thank you for joining us today in Control Your Asthma and Smoking webinar. The UAE is large and arid land with vast sand deserts. Dusty and sandstorm prone environment of the country can create several respiratory problems. For sure, the environmental factors are not the only cause of respiratory issues. Behavioral and lifestyle factors such as smoking plays a major role too. In today's webinar, we are going to bring your attention to one of these respiratory issues, which is asthma. It's our pleasure to have Dr. Ahmed Abbas from the Ambulatory Healthcare Services Saha to take us through this journey. On a side note, please note that you can send your questions through the Q&A chat box anytime during the presentation, and we will allocate 15 minutes at the end to answer these questions. Without further ado, let me introduce our presenter for the day, Dr. Ahmed Abbas. He is a consultant in respiratory medicine working in ambulatory healthcare services Saha, since 2009, and he is a lecturer at Cairo University in respiratory medicine. Dr. Ahmed, welcome. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dr. Yes, Doctor, you can you may start now. You are on mute, Doctor. Now you can hear me, right? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Right. Thank you so much for uh, introducing me and thanks to everyone in the man and thanks for all the attendees. Actually, today we will speak about asthma. It's a, a little bit big topic, but we'll try to uh, to figure out and give like uh, some uh, information about uh, what's asthma, what's the meaning of asthma, because you know so even some patients suffering from asthma, not only like awareness, even some patients they don't know the nature of the disease. Uh, this is one thing. The second is we need we have to go through what's the triggers for asthma. Uh, and then we will have some slides on uh, some medical slides. I'm going to go through it very quickly. Uh, and then we have to an asthma in a special situation like what's asthma with uh, with pregnancy, asthma with children. So I think this can cover a little bit some questions for um, for the audience. And uh, uh, the last slides will be for um, like uh, smoking hazards. And um, it's not too much uh, like slides because the timing will be less because tobacco smoking or smoking in general, it's a big, uh, big thing and contributes in whole, you know, burden, financial burden, health burden on everything. So we'll start now our presentation. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, sorry. Slow. Yeah, now you can see my screen. Not yet, Doctor. Not yet. Okay, sorry. I'm going to do it. What about now? Still? Yes, yeah, still. Now we can see it, doctor. Now you can see it. Yeah? Okay now? No, still no. I, I you did it previously. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I <laughs> Anyway, so let me. should come on this screen. 
Now this is the thing. Okay, Aisha? Yes, yes, doctor, we can see it now. Please present on full screen mode. Okay. Too slow, actually. Ah, now, okay. Now you can see me. You can yeah. see the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can see the screen, but please, the the slideshow, the full mode, please. This is a full mode now. It's not full mode. St Yes, we can see it now, doctor. OK, perfect. There's some delay. I'm so sorry for that. That's OK. OK, so uh, today we will speak about control your asthma and smoking, as I said before. So what's asthma? Uh, asthma is characterized by, uh, by the way, I'm so sorry for uh, before starting. I can speak, of course, English and Arabic. And if anyone has any question in Arabic, you can ask. I can even translate it in both ways. OK, so but this presentation will be in English and I will try to uh, to, to cater all the languages if you need, okay? So, but we'll start with English. So, what's asthma? Asthma characterized by paroxysmal or persistent symptoms such as shorts of breath, chest tightness, wheezing, sputum production, cough, usually associated with variable airflow limitation and airway hyperresponsiveness in response to endogenous or exogenous stimuli. That means when the patient has any, like the, the in-between attacks, the, the asthma patient is completely normal person, okay? But when when exposed to an, a trigger factor, which is could be endogenous or exogenous stimuli as perfume or as we will speak on that all the trigger factors, the patients start to have some inflammation inside, not, not bacterial inflammation. It's like, it's like immunological inflammation. And this release a lot of things will happen or end by some symptoms which could be like chest tightness, uh, difficulty in breathing, sound, he can, patient can hear sound and something like that. So it's, it's the whole the whole thing about asthma is the inflammation. So inflammation and its resultant effect on airway structure are considered the main mechanism leading to the development and persistence of asthma. So asthma is a chronic disease of the airway that's complex and characterized by variable and recurring symptoms, airflow obstruction, bronchial hyperresponsiveness and and underlying inflammation. So we have symptoms as a physician. We look for the patient with the symptoms and we look for the underlying inflammation also. This is very important. We have to treat the underlying inflammation even there is no too much symptoms for the patient. OK, so you have to follow with the, with the pulmonologist or, or the, your concerned physician about the treatment. So uh, this is the, the impact of, of asthma on uh, psychological functioning. Asthma significantly interferes with the patient's daily life. It impacts work and school, limits activity, lead to significant medical expenses, of course. Compared with, with other conditions, asthma often appears to be linked to, a psychiatric, dis uh, to psychiatric disorders. Children with moderate and severe asthma appear to have more risk for adjustment problems. And also, when they have the asthma, like such as hyperactivity, attention deficit or depression or aggression or aggression make asthma management more difficult. So asthma is not a psychological disease, but psychological impact, it can do some psychological impact on the patient because the patient cannot breathe well, he cannot breathe, he cannot take oxygen well. But uh, the other side, when we have a patient with psychological problems, this will impact on even the treatment because some patients, they refuse to take the medications, for example, because of some psychological issues, depression from asthma. And this figure will show us the normal airway, the opening in the middle of uh, this is the airway uh, channel and the asthmatic airway will be less. And during the attack, it will be much, much narrow. OK, so asthma is highly patient specific and has a variable course that can vary from remission to persistent and progression. And it's a well established variable disease. Most cases of chronic and persistent asthma start early in life. This slide is very important because we cannot take every patient, every asthma patient same like the other one. So don't don't listen. Patients should not. They should share their experience, but they should know that 
it's everyone is different. Everyone react to different type of stimuli. Even the reaction is different. Some has only coughing and some has cough and chest wheeze and some maybe go to the emergency uh, every now and then. So everyone is different, so variable. And also the, the pathway of the disease itself. Asthma is a disease we don't know exactly immunological disease. Sometimes it can flare up, like patient can suffer from asthma for many years. And then after that, suddenly and without any uh, cause, it can go for remission. Remission means stability and stationary. The patient, you can even in the public, you can you can like uh, listen to someone say that I had asthma before uh, when I was 25 years old and then stayed with me for 10 years. And then after that, I did not experience up to this moment. This can happen, but it doesn't mean that he cured completely. This can return back later on, but we don't know exactly when. So the, 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 the remission and exacerbation or the remission and flare up, it's very important for the patient to know about asthma. OK, so let's go for one situation. The first situation is asthma in childhood. And also I need you to concentrate with me in this thing because not every child in the first three years or even five to six years has asthma. Not everyone. OK, this is very common question for me in the clinic. Every mother come with a child saying that my son is taking nebulizer, taking inhaler. He has asthma and she's depressing, depressed because of this thing. So in early childhood, recurrent wheeze is common. So not every wheeze in child means asthma. My minority, approximately 30% only, it might be an asthma. So if we have 100 child suffering from wheezing and coughing, only 30% of them will develop asthma and 70% we call it transient wheeze, okay? So in the first uh, year of life, 5% of babies, this first year of life, has had at least one physician visit for wheezing Wheezing is usually transient, so it's not continuous, related to airway caliber and early life, uh, early life, life viral infection and tends to improve. So in the first year, there is some viral infections because in the first years, the maturity of the lung is still not, uh, not the same like in adults or even above six years. So anything can, can lead to obstruction in the airways, not necessarily to be asthma. So transient early wheezing occurring before three years of age compromised 60 to 70 percent of all infant wheezes and is associated with remission of symptoms five to seven years. So the mother will come and say my son suffering in the first three years from asthma and then at age of seven completely normal. It doesn't mean that this is asthma. I cannot rely on this and diagnose asthma by this. So the transient wheeze during infancy is more likely associated with Transient means it's not wheezing all the time and it can come and go. Diminished airway function and child, this is type of test that we are doing skin test or IgE. So if we have a child with, with wheezing and we do, we do this test IgE or skin test and it's negative, so it's a, it, we can consider it transient wheeze. So this is very important information also. Uh, okay, uh, this is actually uh, like type of what type of, of, of cells, immunological cells, we call it eosinophils, T helper cells. I'm not going to go through this, but there is a genetic link, okay, in the development of asthma, but the chromosomes involved remains complex and incomplete. There is a genetics like mother or father or even uh, uh, uncle or aunt, like suffering from asthma could be run in the family, but not every child will be delivered with asthma. It's just we don't know exactly the links and for, for this genetic uh, uh, thing. The second is uh, I want to show you to, to, to take care of this thing. Airway remodeling. Airway remodeling asthma, as I just said in the beginning, sometimes the patient had an attack, has an attack, and then in between attacks is completely normal. OK, but if this patient is not treated well from the beginning and follow with uh, the instructions of the doctor and taking his inhaler, even if there is no symptoms, even if he's not convinced, he should take the medication because, as I said, there is underlying inflammation, okay, that we have to look for. If this underlying persists for a long time and we're not treating it, it will end up to persistent airflow limitation, persistent, not variable. It will be persistent. That's, we call it airway remodeling. Remodeling means stiffness and not respond to inhales. OK, so this is the second thing um, we go through some uh, uh, interesting topic like um, what's asthma exacerbation and what's the trigger for asthma. So asthma can be triggered by virus, infection, allergen, 
Stress can cause uh, asthma exacerbation, bacterial infection, air pollution, exercise, and occupational exposure. But exercise, we also have to know that we, two types of exercise, not everyone using his inhaler during exercise has asthma. Asthma, some, we have sometimes called uh, uh, exercise induced bronchoconstriction, like by exercise can go for bronchoconstriction, but it doesn't necessarily to be asthma. In, in exercise induced asthma means the patient is non asthmatic, but provoked or, or triggered by this exercise. OK, so we'll go some slides. There are no, uh, like here, there is a large number of environment uh, play role in persistence of asthma symptoms. Common trigger is aero allergen, viral point drugs, regular trigger avoidance. This is very important. This is the main, main thing in asthma is to try to avoid the trigger factors. So regular, uh, regular trigger avoidance is a treatment strategy to help reduce the onset of asthma symptoms. Uh, so, OK, this the, the last word is reaction occurs through sensitization. Uh, this word means in, in to public like sometimes patient can be exposed to a type of, uh, of trees or flowers and then after a while he developed asthma symptoms from this uh, flower or tree. That means there is the first exposure. The body doesn't know this flower or the content of this thing allergen. OK, so he start to develop some anti uh, antibodies or anti anti like immuno immunological I want to say it in public world but anyway so some immune response so the next time of the next exposure to the same flower the patient will start because now the body knows will start to fight okay this fight will end up in many uh, uh, substance that can cause uh, allergy okay so we we'll start with the first thing with the domestic animals Cats and dogs are common source of aller aero allergen, can occur from dander or urine or feces or saliva. So it's not only the, 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 the fur for the animal. Can occur with all warm blooded, feathered, or furry animals, include hamsters, rabbits, uh, guinea pigs, birds. Complete avoidance of pet allergen is impossible if the animal remains in the home. So don't tell me that the patient, that this animal is outside my room because it's, it's doesn't mean that you are away of the allergen. So and problem can be exist even when the animal is removed from the home due to persistence of sticky antigens in the home. So let's say because this thing is a, is a myth, OK, because some patients they come, I, I removed my pet like for now one month, two months and still I'm suffering. So the problem is not in the pet. No, it could be stay for even six months or even one year after removing the pet until this antigen will be completely removed from the house. So the treatment is you can take up to six months after pet removal before allergen level fall to low levels. Remove pet from home if possible. Keep pet out of bedroom and close the door room if, if you cannot get, uh, get rid of it and uh, replace the carpet. OK, so this picture is a little bit annoying, I know, but this is the picture of the house dust mite. OK, and by the way, the house dust mite, it's not related to uh, to which uh, house is more clean than the other house because we cannot see this house dust mite and it lives in the in the in mattress in the uh, you know the pillars so uh, dust mites it's a house dust mites level vary with humidity humidity of the house the temperature the season and the type of house house uh, furnishing so high level of mites can found in the mattress pillows carpets and the furniture, bed covers, clothes, and soft toys even for the babies. Treatment, you have to uh, put on the mattress like uh, uh, imp uh, impermeable covers, wash the bed once weekly in hot uh, water, replace carpet and, uh, with hard surface flooring, and lower uh, your um, like humidity. Uh, and there is no single chemical or physical method aimed at reducing dust mite. Allergen is effective. Don't tell me that I'm going to put like chlor chlorine on the uh, on this bed sheet just to remove the mite. No, it will not happen like that. So as we are like before, we used to put everything in the sun. OK, so this is the thing that we have to start do to reduce the, uh, the house dust mite. The cockroach is also it's a major allergen and, and, and it's uh, can cause asthma exacerbation. Um, so usually found in the kitchen cabins, so we have to look for everything like this. 
so you know better than me how to get rid of the cockroaches from the house. OK, so this is also very, very important thing. OK, so the house dust mite is very important and the molds. OK, indoor molds, indoor molds are our fungi are particularly prominent in humid environments and homes that have problem with uh, with, you know, not uh, exposed to too much sun or uh, too much uh, humidity or water. So molds and fungi are aero allergens that can trigger significant asthma symptoms in both seasonal and uh, in also in dark and humid places. Basement, for example. Uh, so um, the treatment is to fix the leaking and pipes all the time and clean moldy surface with the uh, weak bleach solution, not too much because we don't want to expose and reduce household humidity. So what we are doing is to clean uh, the ducts from the uh, from the molds just paint the wall and even some fruits sometimes we keep fruits or even like there is a mold this green picture on the on the screen this is molds the patient can suffer from uh, after exposure to it so uh, seasonal pollens that is from trees and grass and weeds are uh, predominantly dri uh, derived from air and wind po wind borne pollen Plants can extrude allergen containing particles that's less than 10 micrometer in size. This can facilitate entry in the lower airway and trigger inflammation and subsequent asthma symptoms. And also nowadays, uh, uh, nowadays I can see a lot of people, they live like let's say in the center of Abu Dhabi and then they move to a little bit far places with to have another house or to change home. And then they start to suffer from uh, some asthmatic attack. So that means we should we should figure out which with what trees live in like can grow in this area and do some tests for them. OK, so. Also, as I said, like uh, respiratory virus and bacterial infection like uh, influenza, colds, anything like this can trigger. Uh, asthma exacerbation can occur in conjunction with an upper or lower respiratory tract infection. So the patient with. When I see a patient of upper respiratory tract infection, but still he's not developed asthma attack, I have to give him inhaler just to protection before start to uh, suffer from the asthma attack. OK, so we go through this air, air pollution. The thing is we have in the air pollution in the weather uh, news, you can read the air quality index. Air quality index like poor index or high index this because if you have a child and the air quality index is not good, so you can tell the school that you cannot send the, the, your child at this day because there is a lot of fumes, a lot of, of everything. So increased pollution level, especially uh, particles less than 10 micrometer, ozone or sulfur dioxide or nitric, di nitric dioxide have been reported to participate symptoms of asthma and also indoor like smoke, tobacco, uh, wood burning stuff, uh, perfumes, cosmetics, uh, anything, baby powder, fumes, household cleaning products, of course, insecticides, paints, chemicals, cooking, anything that irritate the patient. Uh, so we have to to remove this uh, and away be away from air pollution. Um, OK, so there is also occupational asthma. We call it occupational asthma or occupational sin. There is uh, over 250 occupational uh, uh, like uh, sensitizers like, you know, can can provoke asthma. Occupational asthma like people work in farming, agriculture work, paint, cleaning, plastic manufacture. OK, so again, what's the rule of emotional? Uh, although asthma is not a psychological condition, as I said, emotional or nervous stress can trigger asthma symptoms. Emerging evidence indicate that stress may play a role in, in uh, precipitating exacerbation of asthma and possibly act as a risk factor for increased prevalence of asthma. And strong feelings like, let's say, laughing, crying, any strong feeling can cause and can provoke asthma. This can you can even know from your friends that when they laugh too much, they start to have coughing and when they uh, or crying or whatever. So and also there is comorbidities like you cannot when you are uh, uh, when you are seeing a patient, when we are seeing a patient of asthma, we have to look even for other co other things like if this patient have heartburn, after eat, that means uh, GERD, or even he has some nasal uh, allergy or skin allergy. OK, so what's the link between food? Obesity, by the way, obesity can uh, lower the lung function because, you know, 
patient cannot breathe and cannot cannot expand or cannot inhale too much air. So obesity can cause some limitation of lung function. And also uh, uh, this can add to uh, asthma triggers. It's not a cause of asthma, not obesity can cause asthma. No, but obesity can provoke or make the treatment of asthma uh, uh, less likely or hard to treat. So we are advised every asthma patient to uh, see a nutritionist to start to reduce weight. But what's the what about the food? OK, so the food, this is actually I'm always saying to my patients that you are the doctor in this situation. So you have to figure out what type of food causing this uh, allergic reaction. When you when you when you when you take like uh, fish or you take uh, salmon or almond or whatever, there is a test, of course, that we are doing, but also on ground. So let's say the patient has a problem with almond, for example. So we advise the patient to stop eating everything for two hours and take all take, and take only almond, and then stop taking anything after for two hours. And we see if start to develop any uh, coughing, any rash, any allergic reaction. Otherwise, uh, the patient can treat and uh, can eat everything. Uh, okay, this slide without uh, this is I'm talking about the ladies in the, during the menstruation period. Okay, but there is no title for this slide. I'm sorry. So there is a there is a link between for ladies between menstruation and asthma. So, so there is some sometimes during the pre-menstrual phase, even before or during or after the first few days of menstruation, approximately 20 to 40 percent of women with asthma. I'm not saying 20 to 40 of women. I'm saying of asthmatic cases. OK, have been reported experiencing worsening of asthma symptoms or pulmonary function during pre-menstrual and menstrual period. So. We, we used to have a self-reporting of asthma symptoms like coughing, wheezing, uh, tightness, a chest uh, during this menstruation. So we advise the patient to take his uh, to take her inhaler even before starting uh, the menstruation as a prophylactic measure. OK, so this can happen and you should inform your doctor that during the menstruation, before the menstruation or even after I feel some chest tightness, cough and this and that. OK, so we're still with the ladies, so asthma with pregnancy. Asthma is one of the most serious medical problems to complicate pregnancy and can have a significant effect on both maternal and infant. So a third, th let's say we have 100 cases of uh, asthma because this is very, you know, this you can you can recognize how asthma is variable. OK, so if we have 100 cases of pregnant uh, lady with asthma, so one third will experience improvement in asthma during pregnancy, improvement. OK, so she say I'm suffering asthma all the time, but when I get pregnant, everything is OK for me. I'm not taking any medications or inhaler. This is one third. The other third is worsening of asthma, like she's worsening her asthma condition. And the third, uh, uh, the third part can no changes. It's the same, like as no effect on asthma pregnancy. I'm talking about asthmatic ladies when when they come pregnant not the pregnant ladies in general. OK, so pregnant women with poorly controlled asthma are at much high risk of complication to both herself and child. This I face all the time. The lady comes to me, she's pregnant, she doesn't want to take inhaler because she wants to protect her baby. This is not correct. She should be treated because if she suffers from, from asthma attacks or whatever, this will, will less the oxygen supply to her baby and this will lead to much, much more serious and dangerous effect on the babies. So again, the 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 diaphragm in the pregnant ladies rise about four centimeter. There is 20% increase in oxygen consumption. That means there is another body inside her, so needs oxygen. And metabolic rate also will be increased. Sometimes hormonal changes will will change the the the, the pattern of asthma, as I just said right now. So it's better to treat anyway. So. The key message for most pregnant women with asthma is that the risk of the feet to the fetus is higher from poorly controlled asthma than from preventive medication to control it. Some key that like inhaled corticosteroids are the preferred treatment for long control asthma, the inhalation uh, the, to take inhaler. The course of asthma tend to mimic in future pregnancy. So let's say the first an asthma cases, asthma woman, she has uh, uh, with the first pregnancy, she developed uh, asthma worsening asthma. So that means by the next we can expect it will be the same. OK. 
So, yeah, this is regarding also the occupational, uh, occupational asthma like smoke, uh, volatile, bleach, industrial work, even the temperature, but this is another topic, occupational asthma. Okay, so I'm gonna through, go through it. What's the sign and symptoms of asthma? As I said, chest tightness, episodic, and this is very important, like one time, not all the time, continuous chest tightness and continuous, um, um, like we call it, uh, like chest tightness, dyspnea or, or breathlessness, you have to seek, this is not an asthma. Continuous, this is not an asthma or even late stage asthma. So you have to seek it out. So wheezing means sound like whistling, okay? When he, or during expiration and cough force at night, chest tightness, signs of variable air, variable air flow obstruction, symptoms occur and night awakenings. The patient can wake in uh, night awakenings during night after two hours of sleep, take his inhaler and go back to sleep. This kind of symptom. Okay, so this uh, relation, the coming slides are relation between the doctor and the patient. So if you are going to a doctor, so you have, he will ask you some question and you have even to inform him some uh, important things. So the doctor can ask, do you had asthma or recurrent attack of wheezing? Do you have any troublesome coughing at night? Does the patient wheeze, uh, coughing after exercise? Experience wheezing uh, during exposure to air, air uh, allergen or pollens? Uh, when he got virus infection, develop uh, cough, uh, symptom improving, he took before inhaler and improved. Okay, and then this is for not for the public, but for 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 to tell you that not every case wheezing is asthma, not because we have COPD during smoking, we have heart failure, we have post nasal drip, we have heartburn, and another. I'm not going to go through it right now. So a lot of a lot of of of, of things that is rather than being asthma. Okay, so. Uh, this is also the, the doctor should ask about what's the onset of your symptoms, frequency, change over period, severity. Uh, he will ask about like, um, do you have any family history uh, for asthma or atopic dermatitis? Are you have any uh, exposure to allergen, irritants? Uh, you took any medication before you improved on medication or not? And then the physician will ask for some tests. Spirometry means like it's like it's it's a thing that can measure the 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 the, the lung uh, performance. Okay, so you, you're gonna take deep breath and then you're gonna exhale as much as you can, so that this uh, graph and these parameters will tell the doctor like if it's mild or moderate or 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 is severe. The peak flow peak flow is for the patient to follow up themselves in uh, at home uh, or to know the the variability during day or night. The bronchoprovocation, it's not for every asthmatic case. It's only when we need to know if this is an asthma or not to prove ourselves. If everything is normal and still the patient complaining of symptoms of asthma, we can go for bronchoprovocation test and allergy testing. There is some pictures for the spirometry and uh, and here also this one on the right side, spirometry on the left side, the peak flow. You can take it with you at home and by the way, it's available in the pharmacy and it's not that much expensive. Anyway, so uh, to, to, to control asthma. So asthma is a chronic disease. We're not curing people from asthma. No one can be can tell you that your asthma will be cured, but we can control it. And by excessive control of asthma, we can go for the first slide I told you, remission. So we can go if we are stable and still stable and controlled for a long time, it, we can go for remission. Remission means many, many, many years not suffering from asthma, but doesn't mean that you're completely cured because it can come back again after 10 years, 15 years. So to achieve, maintain control, the daytime symptoms should be less, the night symptoms should be less, uh, normal physical activity, there is no visit to emergency department, no absent uh, for, due to asthma, and uh, uh, not taking his inhaler, and this is very important, the rescue inhaler or the Ventoline. We call it, some patients, they call it the blue inhaler, okay? Uh, this, uh, I'm not gonna go through it, this one slide to ACT, ACT, Asthma Control Test. So the patient should answer these questions every time when he visit the doctor to know if he's asthma controlled or not. Also, this one is self-management. Every patient with asthma should, will come to me, I have to give him this, this is asthma action plan. I explained everything to him. I educate the patient about the inhaler. I did everything and then I gave him some instructions according and tailored to him to, to every patient. So the green, that means you are here. 
So don't do anything. The blue, you start take more inhaler. The, the red, you take this inhaler and you visit the emergency department. So make sure if your son or yourself or, or, or anyone in your family is suffering from asthma, to tell his doctor to give him asthma action plan because this will protect yourself even in the future when you're alone and you can reach your doctor. You know, you need to know what to do. OK, so when to see a doctor. Uh, you have to see a doctor regularly because this is a chronic disease and you have to follow up. But I'm saying that if you haven't like an appointment uh, after three months or six months, but you 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 developed something else new, so you have to come uh, uh, immediately to the doctor if you have developed more frequent cough, uh, uh, wheezing, rash, chest tightness, fever, uh, repeated infection. OK, so asthma care, I'm not going to go through it again because we will repeat every time you should visit a doctor. He should ask you about the triggers, ask you about your inhaler, ask about your uh, are you uh, compliant with inhaler or not? Are you taking correctly or not? Uh, your symptoms can do some tests, spirometry, whatever, and then we'll decide in which step, which step we are because asthma is like, uh, as you can see in the next slide, it's like step up treatment and step down treatment. OK, this is the step up and step down. I'm not going to go through it, OK? But I need to tell you that we have two types of inhalers, and this is very important. We have type, we call it reliever, and the other type, we call it controller. The reliever is to relieve the attack, OK? I have chest wheeze, so I'm taking, or I have short of breath, I take this inhaler just to, re to, to, to relieve myself from this obstruction and this tightness. But as I told you in the beginning, there is no this reliever is not treating the inflammation inside. So the inflammation inside should be treated by controller. So let's say the patient has asthma. So he should take his rescue medication, of course. OK, but he should start taking his controller and this controller medication or inhaler can stay with the patient for a long time, a month is like three to six months, for example, until reducing the dose. And it depends from one case to another. But even if the patient has no symptoms, he should take his controller inhaler to control his asthma and prevent what we call it remodeling in the beginning, which is persistent symptoms. OK, so this type of inhaler uh, inhalers, we have two types like dry powder and MDI. I'm not going to do it and we have every time to figure out how the technique for the inhaler, how we are choosing an inhaler. There is no inhaler better, better than the other. Uh, and we have a rule or I have a rule in my clinic. If the patient is stable on this inhaler, do not change it for him because he used to use it. He know how to use it. He was figuring out how to how to manage how to and when and everything. So not tailored inhalation in, in, inhaler can be anyone is good as long as the patient can uh, take it in a correct way. OK, and much the thing is you ha I'm talking about now for any asthma. Attendant kit, he should feel or he should feel this inhaler coming inside his chest. Not in his mouth. Okay, if he cannot feel it inside his chest, he should seek the nurse or the doctor to tell him how to take his inhaler. Because otherwise, we are giving the side effects and we're not taking the benefits. Okay, also, this will cause about uh, some inhalers. Uh, OK, so this is actually some questions. Asthma can be cured. No, asthma is not cured, as I said. Uh, asthma, why asthma wasn't at night? Because at night there is poor function. At night there is some triggers during maybe it's a house dust mite on the pillow. Maybe some medication from asthma can cause uh, sleep disturbance and can cause this. So asthma can, can be worsened at night. Uh, what's asthma with COVID? Of course, if uh, COVID, it, like asthma, it's not it's not causing COVID or it's not. That means patient is more prone to COVID more than others. But when the patient catch COVID, COVID is a viral infection. As I said in the beginning, common cold or viral infection can trigger asthma. So COVID also can trigger asthma, but it doesn't mean that someone with asthma is less immune than others to COVID. No, but if catching COVID, it, you have to take care of him. OK, that's why uh, during this COVID era, chronic disease, we used to let the patients stay at home to give them more protection. OK, so how can I prevent? Uh, 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 how can I prevent an asthma attack? Of course, you have to be aware of the trigger factor and you take your asthma action plan with you. 
so asthma is a neurological or psychological problem. As I said, no, asthma is not a psychological problem, but psychological problem can provoke asthma. Okay, it's a lung, lung disease or respiratory disease, it's the same. Asthma cured, not cured. Um, treating asthma in here can be addictive. This is very common question even in my home country. Okay, no. Asthma inhalers is not addictive. If you are taking inhaler, we're not addicted to a device. We can be addictive to uh, substance, but not to the device. Like because I see a lot of patients, they come to me, give me oral uh, thing. It's the same. If I give oral or I give inhaler, it's the same. So there is no addiction with inhalers. Nothing like this. Okay, what's the supplement can treat asthma? Nothing. There is no supplement. It's only in all theories. OK, but keep your nutrition and keep yourself in a good shape. OK, uh, 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 like a patient who relapsed must immediately lie down before getting known. Of course, no. The patient should sit, not lying down, because when sitting or standing, we have the space to our lung to move. OK, children with asthma must also have asthma. I think I answered this question. Not every children wheezing has asthma. Uh, humidity is very important to protect ourselves from house dust mite, from molds, from other trigger factors. People with asthma should not exercise. This is completely wrong. They should exercise everything. But we encourage patients with asthma before take going for exercise by 20 minutes, just take two puffs as a prophylactic, as a protection before going to exercise, so he will not suffer later on from any exercise induced asthma. OK, so now we're going to go. I finished asthma. I'm going to go quickly. I don't know the timing now, Aisha, but it's OK. We'll go. We'll go quickly. The, I, this slide is very, uh, uh, um, um, you know, scary. OK, <laughs> type of scary slide because you have to know the components of the smoke uh, of the cigarette or even any uh, smoking like nicotine. Nicotine is poisonous additives like cocaine and heroin and result in emotional dependence. Dependence. The people will be dependent on, on, on nicotine, mood reliever. OK, so this is one thing. The carbon monoxide, the compound, this carbon monoxide, same like what we call uh, the, the car exhaust. It's the same component coming out. So this actually you're taking it by yourself. It's not exposure from the air pollution. You're taking it. The tar, the tar, the substance tar, it's a sticky residue that stain the fingers and teeth. So it's it's like they putting in, in, in many uh, and can cause any many cancer uh, as a cancer agent. Some chemicals and this is very important. Cigarettes contain acetone, which is using for for fair polish removal, ammonia for toilet cleaners. All of this inside the cigarette, uh, the cadmium batteries, the arsenic, it's a rat poisoning, methane, cow uh, fumes, the formaldehyde, they are preserver of all of this. They are, this is preserver for dead bodies. So formaldehyde, methane, arsenic, ammonia, acetone, carbon monoxide, nicotine, and even metals, they're all components of one cigarette that you are smoking. So preferably to quit smoking and try to start and seek a lot of, 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 of smoking cessation clinics running now in, in Abu Dhabi, a lot in every place, and they are getting very, very, very good uh, uh, reviews and very good, uh, you know, rate of, of, of smoking cessation. OK, so smoking can cause deadly cancers, can lead to heart disease, stroke and emphysema. Emphysema means COPD, the lung will be inflated and the patient cannot. This is irreversible. This is not asthma. This is irreversible, irreversible lung destruction and also high risk for other respiratory problems. The pregnant endanger herself and the, the baby. So here the stroke. A smoker chance of dying from heart, heart attack is two, three times greater than the one non-smoker. One in four heart attacks is believed to be directly related to smoking. OK, okay. when a smoker who had a heart attack, the risk of sudden death is twice than the non-smoker. So smoking is much higher risk factor for heart attack or stroke than high cholesterol, obesity, high blood level or stress. And this is very important for me to tell you that people are looking for uh, respiratory symptoms for asthma, for uh, for cigarette smoking. This is not correct because the main and more, even not every patient can can have some uh, suffer from some respiratory problem, but mostly, mostly even all of them, they have coronary heart disease and they will develop and have prone to coronary heart disease. So benefit of smoking, there is always benefit of quitting smoking. OK, people who quit smoking before 50 reduce the risk uh, by half in the coming 15 years. If you stop before 35, 
years, you, you, you reverse already, you reverse the smoking risk for heart attack. So don't tell me that I already started for 10 years. I'm not going to stop because the risk is there. No, if you stop, the risk will be completely uh, lowering or eliminated. OK, so we'll go now for this. This is another slide that will show you how the heart is vessel is very small and we are occluded by uh, by smoking because smoking cause we call it vasculitis. Vasculitis inflammation in the small arteries. So this inflammation will will lead the cholesterol even with normal cholesterol will will be stagnant inside this small vessel and 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 you know obstruct the blood supply. So the benefit after the first year of not smoking, your risk of heart disease decreased by half. Your risk of having a heart attack decreased when you stop smoking. And then after 15 years, I repeat pain. OK, so this is the problem with the woman. Woman who smoke is likely uh, having problems. As I said, still birth, miscarriage, low birth weight, children who have learning, emotional and behavior problems. With smoking, of course, will be benefit for the mother in all time of, the, of her trimester. Or even on nutrition, nutrition also the smoking drain the body of essential vitamins, minerals, block absorption of this vi uh, vital nutrients. OK, so smoking accelerate the production of free radicals. OK, because I can see a lot of patients, they smoke and then they are drink uh, uh, healthy water with. No, this is, will not happen at all. OK, so preferably not to drink this healthy water and quit smoking first. The vitamin D uh, can also uh, aid in calcium absorption will be directly affected with smoking. So even with old age, we are saying that we have uh, uh, like osteoporosis or whatever. This has a direct effect on uh, vitamin. So benefit of quitting, the blood will absorb better, strong immune and high antioxidant level creates strong wounds and reduce getting sick, reducing people from getting sick. This is the also secondhand smoke like spouse and children have an increased risk of cancer, heart disease. Babies who parents smoke are more likely to have ear infection, pneumonia, bronchitis in the first year of, of their life have a higher risk of sudden infant death syndrome. The benefit of quitting, when you quit smoking, you reduce all of these risk factors. And thank you, Aisha. It's, I know it's a very long presentation, but I try to make it as much as I can. Thank you. Thank, so thank you, Doctor, for such an informative presentation, really. Uh, now we will be moving to the Q&A uh, section. And we have one question. Uh, there are it, it states there are certain injections which help to reduce the reactions to allergies. What does the doctor think about this and does it help with asthmatic patients? OK, so I, I, I don't know exactly what's the name of this injections, OK, because if, if I think we're talking about what we call biologics in asthma, biologic medication in asthma or injection could be steroid injection, for example. So it depends. I don't know exactly what uh, what is the if the if the like I, if you know what's the name of this injection, I can answer. But let's say if, if the doctor prescribed an injection of steroid asthma, that means this patient is in exacerbation. This patient obstructed. I'm not going to give injection steroid injection for a patient with even mild or moderate asthma. It should be a severe asthma and uncontrolled asthma so I can give injection because nowadays we have a lot of things different than inhaled. Uh, different than injection of a steroid as before. We have inhalation, we have also. If we are talking about the biologic medication, like we call it tomalizumab or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or um, uh, Zolaire or whatever, this biologic medication is only catered for severe uncontrolled asthma, not for every patient. OK, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good. And is it OK if the room has full carpet, but it's vacu vacuumed regularly? Uh, it depends. It depends on 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 what type of, of of you know allergen to everyone. I'm not saying that every asthma case suffer from uh, dust mite or suffer from some mold. So if we remove it, if the patient know that he has this provocating factor, so it's not clean. He should remove it. It's not clean. Mm -hmm. The back mm -hmm. cleaning is not to treat. As I told you, it's not like dust mite can live in the carpet. And it's not uh, it's not meant to be uh, a cleaning issue. It's a humidity like it's better do not doing vacuum, but control the, the humidity of the of your house. OK, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. put it in the window more and more heat. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, doctor, can asthma be developed in adulthood or it's developed first in childhood? So can adults develop asthma later on? 
Yes, yes. There is there is two types of asthma. Uh, like uh, there is a type of asthma that it's uh, it's um, can develop in childhood. We call it atopic asthma. And we have asthma in uh, in the adulthood, which can be like non atopic asthma. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is there a difference between smoking cigarettes or electronic cigarettes or shisha? Uh, yes, of course. Actually, uh, people thinking that uh, electronic cigarette is much harmful than the normal cigarette or the shisha. But the fact is, the, the thing is, every, every type of smoking has its own, uh, you know, drawbacks. So smoking, cigarette smoking, as I said, it, there is carbon monoxide more because there is more, there is more uh, burning for papers, okay? But mm -hmm. we are going for uh, shisha. The shisha smoker, the, the smoking depends mainly because of the presence of the glycerin. So it's a tobacco and glycerin to make this shisha or, or, or this happen and, and, and can be taken. Also the electronic cigarette, it's same component like shisha. It's a, 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 a nicotine with Glycerin and inhalation of glycerin. This is carcinogenic, of course. So it's the same. It's the same. Maybe less nicotine. People are thinking that I'm going to reduce the cigarette by taking less nicotine. Nicotine only is not the thing. It's the other components. OK, so you take less nicotine. This is nothing. OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, and uh, doctor regarding the humidity in the room. So there is a question how we can control the humidity in the room. Uh, I think I think there is uh, there is a, a like I I don't know exactly this is not this is mainly for uh, you know for education nursing and this and that but as far as I know that there is a there is a machine that can measure the humidity inside the room okay and mm -hmm. then it can bring a humidifier this humidifier he can control with it what at what level the patient can keep the humidity so he should measure it first and then there is a humidifier you can get it from anything. Amazon from anything. You can get a humidifier. Very simple mm -hmm. one. Don't bring a big one because it's the same function. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And someone from the audience is asking, I had mild bronchial asthma. Is that uh, is that can be a severe case? Doctor told me to avoid AC and dust. Uh, OK, so we uh, avoiding the trigger factor. If he is suffering from after exposure to dust, he has asthma attack or after exposure sitting in the AC, he has asthma attack, so that means he should be away from it. OK, because not all asthma cases have the same trigger factors. OK, mm -hmm. every asthma case, as I said, is different. Like he, the, for, for this, uh, the guy that he answered he, I have the question, or gentleman that he asked the question, he, he can eat like, for example, he can eat everything. But the other one, he can, can expose to dust, no problem, but he cannot eat everything. So it's different. This is one thing. So if he has a problem exposure to dust and AC, he should be away from from them. OK, mm -hmm. the second. Uh, oh, no, but but the AC, we should be clean because maybe the AC ducts contain molds. So let's say he's inside his work. He has suffering from asthma attacks, but at home not. So that means mm -hmm. there is a problem in the AC ducts and there is a mold inside that can provoke his asthma. The second is mild asthma. We have to stop here. OK, mild controlled or mild uncontrolled. This is the main. Arid Aries has mild asthma, but he's not taking his rescue medication, as I said, all the time, like once every week. So he is controlled. There is no night awakenings. He's controlled. OK, there is no chest wheeze, no coughing. He's not absent from his job. He's playing football, for example, normal. So if he can do this and he is a mild controlled asthma, OK, mm -hmm. but mild could be uncontrolled. If the mild is uncontrolled, that means he's going to go for moderate and then severe. OK, so mm -hmm. that, it's a progress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, good. And is using ventilator and uh, palmicort at home enough for asthma when it happens or should visit ER? Uh, OK, this is very uh, this is the action plan. Mm -hmm. OK, as I said, action plan. So mm -hmm. I know that some patients, they cannot like old age patients, they cannot take inhaler in a proper mm -hmm. way. OK, or even during the asthma attack at home, they suffer from uh, panic attacks. They cannot they cannot use the inhaler. OK, and they cannot take deep breath. It depends on the situation. So if we are taking the inhaler, I have let's say I suffer from chest tightness at home. I know I'm not known asthmatic. I have chest tightness now and start to wheeze. So I use my inhaler first. No need to take too much medication. If there is no response from the medicine, I have to take the, nebul the nebulization, 
okay, as a rescue. I'm talking now about rescue. Okay, mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. inhalation, take palmicort, salbutamol with saline, and then go directly to the ER. Okay, mm -hmm. but you are not capable of taking your even inhaler. Some people, we are sometimes giving them nebulizer at home because they cannot take nebulization. They, they cannot take inhaler, so I give them nebulization. Okay, so if we if we reach the level of having rescue nebulizer, so we have to visit the ER. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And can persistent dry cough be considered a sign for asthma pre-discomposition, yes. especially if it leads to a bronchoconstriction? Yes, yes. As I said, it's sometimes we call it cough variant asthma. We have one type of asthma. We have asthma phenotypes, okay? So one type of them is cough variant asthma, which is only coughing and chest tightness, only dry cough. The patient never, never, he never experienced any wheezing. OK, but he start coughing all the time. But dry irritative cough, he mm -hmm. should see a doctor first to 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 tell him that this is asthma. Like if he's known asthmatic and he developed dry cough, so it's OK. This is asthma attack and he should take his inhaler. But mm -hmm. if he is not known to be asthma and he's suffering from chronic cough because chronic cough, they have a lot, a lot of um, differential diagnosis, okay? We can, GERD can cause dry cough, ear pain can cause dry cough, post nasal discharge can cause dry cough. Dry cough could be for medicine if he's hypertensive and taking medication can cause dry cough. So asthma is known asthmatic, so this is hyperreactive bronchi and he should take his controller medication, controller, not mm -hmm. the rescue. Mm -hmm. If not known asthmatic, he should see a doctor first before deciding that he's asthma or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And someone also is asking what I can do if I had an asthma attack, but I don't have my inhaler. OK, this is very, very nice question. OK, <laughs> so but I need to explain it. I don't know. I need you to listen to me carefully. OK, because what happened that the problem in asthma in the beginning, it start with exhalation, not inhalation. So please bear with me because this is a very important question. Mm -hmm. So the patient can take deep inhalation normally like this, but he cannot get out. He can do this sound while while getting out the air from his lung. OK, so mm -hmm. if he doesn't have his inhaler, he should sit, try to relax if he develop this attack and take small amount of air in like inspiration, small amount of air and exhale slowly, slowly. And till the end, like this, I'm going to do it in front of everyone right now because this is very important. OK, like this okay. small inhalation and then. Prolong the exhalation. Mm -hmm. This can keep your air out because when the patient start to panic, he start to breathe like this. So air is coming in and it's not coming out. So it's like a balloon. You, mm -hmm. you, you inflate the balloon. And you're not giving way or space and time to deflate. OK, so mm -hmm. again, small breath in and long like this, like whistling, but to outside. Until a long time, this is very good and important question until he reach his uh, doctor, of course. Mm -hmm. or, uh, uh -huh. And last question, uh, doctor, uh, please, could you provide more details on airway remodeling? OK, so um, as I said, there is a type of of, of OK, I'll, I'll put it first in a, in 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 a, like in a part in, in thing that we need to know if if I'm going to fri do friction on my hand. OK, mm -hmm. this friction I'm doing it every minute like this every minute. So what will happen to my skin? It will become hard. OK, and resistant to everything thick and, and mm -hmm. hard, right? This mm -hmm. area. But my rest of my arm will be OK because of I'm keeping I'm keeping scratching it for a long time. This is exactly what happened inside the airways. As I said, asthma is an inflammation, but not bacterial inflammation, but it's an inflammation and it's not reflecting to the symptoms. It doesn't mean that you have symptoms, you don't have inflammation. You have to the doctor who decides this, not the patient. OK, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we have inflammation inside, repeated inflammation every time, like because this is very common, every time I see case of asthma, he said that, OK, when I have the, the attack, I take one puff and I'm good. Second day, mm -hmm. one puff, I'm good. Third day, one puff, I'm good. And then I'm OK after the fourth day. So I stop everything. I return back to my work. This is completely wrong 
because when you start to take your inhaler in the first four days, you are treating the symptoms now. Symptoms will be relieved after 45, 40, 4 days, but the rest will be inflammation. So if he's not treating this inflammation, the rest that he's not seeing it because patient cannot, cannot tell I have inflammation in, inside, no. Okay, but we have to treat it. So when we treat this inflammation, we reduce the scratching, we reduce the effect on the airways, but repeated like this inflammation and relief, inflammation and relief, inflammation and relief will lead to thick, thick and hard airways. Okay, so mm -hmm. when the patient takes, again, it will be persistent. Why variable? Why we are talking, we are saying asthma is variable? Because patient has obstruction, he took the inhaler, now this obstruction is relieved. So this is variable, okay? Closed and relieved. But in airway remodeling, it will be narrowed, but cannot be relieved. Mm -hmm. this Yes, yes, great. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, so much for your input. We try to take as much questions as we can. Thank you really for your great input and a great presentation. Thank you so much, Aisha. I, I really enjoyed this presentation and you guys in the morning are very professional and thanks for all the attendees and uh, thank you all. And if you have any question, I'd be very happy to help anytime. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Doctor. And special thanks also to our audience for joining us today. Looking forward to meet you again in upcoming webinars. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the day.